Hi! So, today I'll be showing you how you can use sprite sheets in Resin Knight. Now, a sprite sheet is very easy to explain. If we go over here, you'll see that we have this little sheet here that has 10 little images across and 8 little images down. And basically, it's just supposed to be a simple animation, and over here you can actually see this little animation in action. Now, if you originally try to bring this little animation in, you'll notice that it'll look like this. Now, obviously, that's not really what we want. So what we have to do is we have to make a slot, ideally give it its own slot, just for sake of like overview, that's why I usually make my own slots here. And we'll call the, the this Atlas animation. Or I call it animator. Then we go to attach component. We go to rendering and give it an atlas info component. Then we go back and go down to uh, transform drivers and give it a UV Atlas animator. Then we grab the Atlas info and plug it into here. And here you'll have to define your grid size, which has X and Y, which if you don't know about it, means nothing to you. But basically X is how many images are across on the horizontal axis. And Y is how many images are across on the vertical axis. So here we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And here we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so that's 10 by 8. Great. Now, since this actually has a, an image in every single one of these, our actual frame count is obviously 80. So down here in frames, we'll type in 80. Oh, actually, in, in, in grid frames, we'll type in 80. And down here, we'll keep this at 0 for now. Next, in order to control how this here looks, we'll have to grab the texture scale and plug this into the scale field of the UV Atlas animator and grab the texture offset, and also plug this into the offset field of the Atlas UV animator. And immediately you'll see that looks a lot better, because now we have the very first frame of this animation. Now, next, if we open up the frame here with the, our little keyboard, we can cycle through it manually, and you'll see as I change the number, we are accessing different frames However, it's not moving on its own. The way we can move it, make it move on its own is by attaching another component. This time it's in Transform Drivers, and it's actually called Time Integer Driver, Time Int Driver, where we want it to repeat at 81, I think should be correct. And then we grab the frame and slot it into the target. And now every second it's going to change to the next frame. Which is a bit slow, so let's speed it up a bit. You can speed it up by making the scale larger. A bit faster. And there you go. Let's just go over all of them. Yep, this goes over every single frame. And yeah, this is this is literally how easy it is to make an animated image here. Now, one thing that you might notice is that we have a black background that's pretty gross, and here we have a nice transparent image. Now, what you have to do in order to fix that is you actually have to go into the material and change it from opaque to cutout. And the moment you do that, the transparency is actually being removed. Now, if you have a gradient or something there, so you have differences in alpha, you have to set it instead to either a true alpha or 
too transparent, but for our current image, it's just cut out because it just has a nice little cutout. All right. Well, I hope that this helps you in making and bringing in little animations. Then I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.